Hi, welcome to the Cloud Native SIG for Jenkins. We're discussing some GSOC admin and answering any questions that you have about GSOC or any of the initiatives that we are involved in. So welcome, Aditya. Do you have any questions? Okay. Great, welcome. One of the things we were just discussing is the um, thinking how we can bring the Tekton client plugin project forward as a mentoring program. So hopefully we'll get that get that done. What has been done recently in the Tekton client plugin? I feel like there's continuous work being done on it and I have not been able to track it. I have not had the time. James Rackham added some um... They put in some PRs to get the text on catalog stuff working. Um, it uses text pipeline, which is a binary that's kind of bundled into the plugin itself, um, which I think is okay short term. I think longer term, we probably want to make a, an actual pure implementation of that. Um, but I think for the time being, I think we're probably okay. Um, we, we may well have issues running this on funny architectures. Um, like if someone tries to run this on ARM, I'm pretty certain it's not going to work uh, at the moment. Um, but yeah, it, it is good. What we have there is really good and it does work. Um, and then we're trying to work out how to get it into a pipeline at the moment. Um, I actually have it working as a local PR pipeline, which is quite nice. Um, although I, there are some issues with the code when it comes to um, locating files in the remote workspaces, which I need to chat to some people about, understand that a bit better. But um, yeah, it's progressing. It's, it seems to be working. The Dep 229 stuff is working really nicely to release it each time. Cool. Good. So for me to understand, Tekton has been added as a binary within... Uh, so JX pipeline has been added as a binary oh, inside, okay. inside, the, um, inside the, the repo. And that, what we do is we kind of extract that out and then call it from wherever it's being run from. Um, and that enhances your pipeline if you've used the kind of user's syntax. So you can do this kind of pipeline library stuff, um, which is really nice. I know James has had added a proposal to add this, add that kind of functionality into Core Tekton. Um, so it could just be a temporary thing. And then, you know, in a few months time, as that, as that proposal proposal progresses, it may be something we want to you know, remove or re-implement, something like that. Okay. But um, as a sort of temporary solution, yeah, it's working really good. Uh, James did a blog on that, on the, yeah. uh, that was this week, so that's really, that's really nice. Um, I think that's, that's actually been published now. Uh, yeah. How would you re-implement it? Like what, what would you do? So if it's, if it's something that is going into core Tekton, I would expect Tekton, to, Tekton itself, so the Tekton controller to handle that. Um, let me just, you're asking us to the right blog. Um, this is a PR. Yeah, um, I'll just, I'm not sure actually, I'll, I'll have a look. Yes, it could well be. For the implementation, this is the... So that's, so that's the, that's the implementation. Okay. Of, it's not, so it's not all of it, mm -hmm. because the pipeline does, does a number of things around version streams, which is which is like a, like the next level of complexity. Really, um, it's very very nice, um, but 
version trees that kind of don't make sense inside Tekton at the moment. So he, he was working out how to sort of kind of chop that bit up to use it in a, in a way that is just, um, it's something that's usable for everybody. Um, so it doesn't have to deal with like credentials and all that kind of stuff. So it's, I, I, so when it comes to, if that gets into a, a new tech on release, and so I think all we will really need to do is remove the logic on our side that does that enhancement. I think we'll just be able to use just the updated Tekton release and it should support that out of the box. Sweet. Um, and by yeah. support that out of the box, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get this right in my mind. Would that be support version streams right out of the box? Is that? Is that no, so just, just the, um, the, the notion of this kind of like, yeah, composite tasks, I think that's what he's calling it. Okay. Um, so it's the ability to, you can, you can define pipelines in other resources and other images and then refer to them uh, with, with the ability to override certain steps. Um, those, yeah, that, that's, that's the idea of it. It's a bit like the kind of pipeline library. So in, in Jenkins world, you, in theory, you could implement pipeline libraries as Tekton, as these Tekton comp composite tasks and depend on a versioned set of those, which would be really nice. Yeah. Um, you, know, you could centrally, centrally manage them and do whatever it is you need to do but with, with also providing the ability to just override the bits that you want. And that's that's within running a Tekton pipeline run or running within, sorry, I'm, I'm just trying to get the linking of what, what is being inserted where. So, so the way that it kind of works at the moment is that we're either assuming you're running, you're running Jenkins on a Kubernetes cluster, which has Tekton installed, or you have in some way configured um, access to that. So it knows about how to get to the Kubernetes cluster. So all what we're really doing is we're locating the task or the pipeline or whatever, whatever the Tekton resource is and we're creating it in that cluster. And then if there are logs or anything like that that we do, we stream them back. So that's the, the current way of doing it. So, in a in more of a real world scenario, you may be running these in two different clusters. Um, that might be preferred. Um, you'd certainly run them in separate namespaces. So you're um, you're creating a new you're creating a new set of Tekton resources, and Tekton would be installed in a different namespace from Jenkins. And then it's a case of just monitoring the status of those jobs to completion and, and feeding back. Vibhav, how does this, um, how does this, how do you feel about Like, How does this fit your vision for, for this? Because you, you've been involved from the very beginning and just want to, I'm just curious what your feedback is on the, on this, how this is iterating forward. It was actually great. It is actually great to see that like we can right now just give like a reference to some uh, task, like one of the catalog tasks and, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, kind of build a pipeline from there. So yeah, that is, that is some, that is great, but I am still thinking like how this would be, um, you know, could, could be made cleaner probably because as Gareth, you said like this, I don't know if this, uh, how this will work out in the long, long term with the binary being there in the, in the plugin, so, but but I think this is really really good to start with to use the, like catalog tasks. Probably at some point, what we could do is we could uh, query the catalog API and like pull tasks from there. And I think there is some work going on in uh, Tekton to like make uh, this this easier. Not exactly with catalog but you know about like pulling pipelines yeah. like to reference pipelines you should be able to ref 
reference them from like anywhere. Like if I have like pipelines stored in like some uh, some place, I should just be able to give the URL to the pipeline, and it just it doesn't have to download it, but it just like refers there and like it start starts using it from there. There is some work going on uh, regarding this upstream. Yeah, this is uh, if this if this works out, it will be like very cool because then at that point. From like a Jenkins pipeline, like you could just say, okay, uh, I need to use this catalog task, uh, and I want to make a task run out of this, and yeah, it would be that would be very nice to see. Yeah, currently, think, like, sorry, go on. Yeah, I think that would be like a long way down. Currently, I think uh, so. Gareth, you opened the PR for the uh, creator of pipeline, right? So this is yes, uh, yeah. This will directly go into uh, this Jenkins files, no? Yeah. So um, yeah, I'll I'll just ping the um, the actual PR on the chat uh, if I can find it. Uh, I'm just trying to get my I'm trying to work out. So I've got a, I've got like a kind of integration test that's using the Jenkins rule, and mm -hmm. um, and the Kubernetes server as a rule and then it changes it creates a rule chain chains them together but i'm trying to work out how to configure the tecton client aspect of that in the unit test so that i'm actually because what, what happens at the moment is when i run the test locally mm -hmm. it actually creates the tasks in my own um kubernetes cluster oh. <laughs> i was like this is working why is it not working when i push it up to github and then like, uh, i couldn't, try this I couldn't for the life of me what we need yeah, to do with, uh, are, you, are you passing the cube context for this uh, i'm not passing it i think it's it's using my default cube context which yeah, I, yeah i think at this point point like what we'll have to do is we'll kind of have to properly put like cube context and then do it. but yeah this is a this is awesome like this is <laughs> this is really cool like now we can just run pipelines directly off of client. Nice. Yeah. Okay, I can't wait for this to uh, get merged. Then. <laughs> yes, it's not. There's 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 some issues with it, and when it runs on a remote agent, it can't find the task that I have actually extracted into the local workspace. So I've, there's some logic in the code that isn't quite working. Um, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep on it, iterating on this. I've kind of been given the all clear to get this um, pull request um, pushed up. So that's good. Um, so yeah, this is what I'm, this is what I'm going to be doing um, for the rest of the day, really. <laughs> if, if that is the issue that's happening, do you think that uh, when we run, uh, if we run one of these Jenkins files in the future with the, uh, what was the feature that we were talking about just before this, with the JS, JX pipeline effective, like if we yeah. had to run the uh, Jenkins file pipeline with uh, some with the code that is using JX pipeline effective on an agent, so in that case also we'll need to have the binary on the agent, right? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, and there are multiple ways of doing that. I suppose. Um, I mean, you could just say that people need to install the binary on the agent that they they're running on so if it, yeah that, that, that's one option um another option is to try to idea. Uh, <laughs> i think it might sound a little too weird but can we serialize the binary and then execute it from java and then yes yeah, so, so that that's what that's actually what's happening at the moment yeah it's whether or not we can copy the binary and the right binary onto the agent to execute it but that is that is also an option. There is a Jenkins has a, a way of doing that. Um, I think there's like a I think it's called the master slave callback that you can create that goes off and does this stuff. That's, that's one area they haven't renamed yet, actually. Just think, God, I hope that's renamed. <laughs> no, it's and not. There is a good it's, initiative happening to yeah. clear up everything. Yeah. So I think they're start this in terms of the renaming. They're like they're starting off doing everything that's kind of visible in the UI, but then there's actually a lot of code in there that if they rename that, that is going to break an awful lot of plugins. Um, so like eventually it's, it 
yeah, they, they possibly need to like change the hierarchy of, of classes the, so that people can start including the right one and deprecate that. But we awesome? know that like Jenkins plugins are built off really old versions of Jenkins, so yeah. Is it is it still possible to like send the uh, deprecation notice? Like, have you guys kind of done that kind of API? I know Jenkins is huge, and have have you uh, ever kind of done that kind of deprecation for an API? Uh, yes. Yeah, so if you, I mean, if you look in Jenkins calls call, then um, an awful lot of it is deprecated. Um, Certainly, so one of the PRs that I tried to, I just pushed up, it isn't, there is something else going on with this Kubernetes mock client that I need to have a look at. But it was um, based on the recommendation from Jesse to upgrade the core Jenkins version that we build the plugin against, because there is a different series of kind of APIs that you can call. So it's like you get the perform method, but without the workspace. So it means you can kind of run it um, this is meant to be much better anyway. So that is a potential thing. But if you have a look at the code there, most of the functions are deprecated, um, but they, they still have to exist because all plugins still build against those versions. That, that reminds me of something I read about uh, while starting off with plugin development. Um, is there a way to safeguard uh, like plugin out, like if, if you have maybe like a change in UI in the plugin, uh, is there a way to kind of like safeguard the actions that are happening from like, uh, because like some feature or something got deprecated, like uh, how do we manage that on a plugin level so that it doesn't break users if we deprecate something? you know, like on a cosmetic level, not on a functional level? Um, yeah. So I, I think, I'm not sure if this will completely answer that question, but so, I mean, so in Jenkins core, very little code is ever removed. You always kind of overload the methods with the new ones that you need. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so the old working versions, even though they're marked as deprecated, still exist. Um, and they might delegate onto the new methods or something, you know, there, there is a way of handling it, but it's quite strict in terms of, yeah, you don't really want to remove code from there to get that working. Um, so my daughter's picked up a ball right beside me and she, she's getting very excited about it. <laughs> Um, I think there's a really good uh, wiki page called like the Prime API Directive, and it goes over these kind of things. Like, so when you're changing changing APIs, where APIs are Java code, you know what you can and can't do to them um, to make sure that they're forwardly and backwardly compatible. Um, see if I can find that. Pop it in the chat. Yeah, yeah, can you please? Like, I'd love, I'd love, love to get a look at that. Yeah, yeah, it's from there. It looks like it's one of the Eclipse pages. But it's, it's, it's valid. Um, it's not just Java based APIs, the same as the case, you know, the same is true with pretty much everything. Yeah, this will be, this is, this will be very helpful. I haven't actually studied this part of like API development. It's something that the spring framework's been quite good at. Like they're very good at not they'll mark things as deprecated for a, for a quite a long time until they mm -hmm. produce a, um, a new major release. And only, only on those major releases are they actually removing um, those, the, the, the functions that are there. And even then it's, they, they, well, yeah, no, 
always remove them straight away. You might find that people in the community are saying, no, it's too much effort for me. To, I can't upgrade to the latest version because it would be too much effort for me to change all this and they, they leave them in for a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's either if the developer is or like the release team is lazy to take care of the bugs that will come. Yeah, it's, I have noticed this like deprecation is always like, if they say something is deprecated, but it's actually in use for like a longer time. Like no one really goes to the newer versions. I feel yeah. Like, like it's, I think with, because there's discussions at the moment about potential Jenkins 3, isn't there? Um, that's happening. And that would be very interesting to understand. Are there, is there a, is there going to be a policy removing a lot of deprecated codes um, for the Jenkins 3 release? Because if you're following proper semantic version, this would be the perfect mm -hmm. time to do it. Um, yeah, it would, yeah, it would be a very good, good moment. Um, yeah. I, I have seen the proposal for that and it, it's very interesting and really great for Jenkins, uh, really exciting. I don't know how much bandwidth there is in that or in general for um, actually doing a big deprecation. So even though semantically it would make sense, I don't know if in practice that many of the changes would be put in changes. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good issue to raise actually at this moment. If we if we do go with uh, Jenkins three, because yeah, so it's a good time to do it. Is there a proposal page like a white paper or something like for Jenkins three? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not. I th I think it's something that's being mooted. Um, I can look into to um, so I'm not sure how, even how much publicly it's. I, I, will, I will get you a copy. <laughs> it's a short of it. I, I will see. Um, yeah, I have to circle back on that. Okay. Is it, is it, I think it might be a proposed topic for the next contributor summit. Yes. Um, yeah. So the, um, in which so case, may, that may that be shared. shared. Yeah, yeah. The idea is to be sharing it. So, um, but it, it's a very, it's a, it's a new initiative. So that's why it's. I'm just. I have to check how much is public. But yes, we we definitely are going to want. Um, feedback, obviously, from the community. What would be nice to see is if uh, the next version of Jenkins, probably if, uh, is Quarkus-able, I don't know. Uh, how, what, is, what is the support right now for Jenkins in Quarkus? The last time I remember it, it wouldn't compile. Uh, like I tried compiling it with Quarkus. Yeah, it was, I think it was like a year and a half ago. Um, I didn't have much luck with it. But it would be nice to see Jenkins uh, be compiled with Quarkus. I'm wondering if, yeah, I have a feeling that Jenkins relies quite heavily on reflection. And that yeah. may be a bit of a, a showstopper. Uh, or at least one of the libraries that it uses. So reflection is the main issue because of which it doesn't happen, is it? Yeah, you have to. Is it, I can never remember which one's which, but like, um, you have to like register for reflection, don't you? Not to say, tell it at compile time that this can this class can be used for reflection, um, so that it can do that. Otherwise, yeah, you can't just do it for everything like you can with the normal JVM. Mm -hmm. If Jenkins 3 does come by, like, uh, what do you think would be like the main features and stuff? I like, don't know. What, like, I'm just <laughs> what changes would come. Uh, it probably would have to be mostly in the engine, right? Yeah, so I, I, I actually don't know. And I don't know whether it would be more of a marketing release or an actual like functional breaking change release. Um, but I suppose this is, these are the things that will come up in the contributor summit. Like say that, that when, when we, when they start having conversations there, um, I know, I know that we've had quite a few sort of requests from the community to release it as a, like, even like 
what we have today as a Jenkins 3 because we're on, what are we on? 2.289. So it implies like 289 minor changes that have gone on. So it's it's quite a long way from 3.0. Um, and they feel it would be quite a good marketing push if we release something as three, but um, technically you'd probably want to use that three to remove um, or upgrade certain components. Yeah, 289, well, I'm not, when did Jenkins 2 release exactly? It's quite a few years ago. I know that I know that there are still some plugins that are built against version one. <laughs> um, one dot something. So any, any any code that was removed or would be removed is potentially going to break plugins that aren't maintained. Okay. Just, just a quick shout out for the Contributor Summit. It's on the 25th of June and is essentially part of CDCon, which you should all sign up for because that's going to be awesome. And I put a link in the chat to the Contributor Summit. And there is a draft agenda, but it is still looking quite draft. But that, that does mean you are more than welcome to add topics that you would like. Um, to be added to the agenda. And there, yeah. I would imagine that Jenkins, like, that Jenkins 3 is going to definitely feature quite largely in this. So it would be fantastic to have your involvement and input and proposals. So uh, during CDCon, will, it, will this be like a separate session? like uh, an hour-long session or something? Yeah, it will be um, at a separate time as well. So it's it's adjacent to CDCon, but it's, so you will not have to miss CDCon talks to, to participate in this. It, yeah. I think it's the day after CDCon. And it's an associated summit. There's actually a number of really good um, summits that are happening around there, around CDCon and connected with CDCon. There's a GitHub summit too, which should be really fun um, to look into. I'll put a link uh, in the chat for CDCon and I'll put it for our meeting at all these links as well. I think it's like CDCon, GitHub summit, and like one other summit that are happening, like they are co located, right? Yeah, I mean, co-located, co-located means something, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit sadder now that <laughs> we're still in the virtual world, but yes, these are, these are essentially co-located events with CDCon. Yeah, thanks for reminding me about that. I haven't seen the sun in like, I think two weeks. Yeah, so CDCon is from June 23rd to 24th, and here is the registration link. Just stick that in our chat in the meeting notes. Can I circle back and ask a, a basic question on the Tekton client plugin? As it's currently configured, are there any limitations on what um, from the Tekton catalog you can bring into a Jenkins pipeline? Well, as far as I know, uh, the Tekton catalog that comes with the binary is the is basically the one that can be used. So. Um, there's no, I don't think there is any uh, like remote calls to the binary as such. Sorry, remote calls to the uh, catalog. Not through the Jenkins interface or, or not through the Jenkins controller anyway. I'm assuming you could always install catalog items manually into the namespace that you have Tekton running and then refer to them. Yes. Um, but I, I mean, it's something that I haven't I haven't tried, but there's, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. No, but it's um, pretty straightforward, like using those catalog tasks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like initially, how I was thinking catalog would work out is 
um like we kind of just uh, store all store the entire catalog like all the yaml files which is i don't know how great of an idea it is but kind of just store them uh, with the resources in techcom client plugin uh, and we kind of you know uh, sync the catalog once in a while uh, like once every day probably to like keep it updated and uh, what we can do in the create task like create raw probably we can uh, give one of the uh, items in the catalog over there like just uh, reference it have like a uh, drop down menu or just actually just reference it from there and then you know allow users to use it that was that that was a much simpler idea that i thought of using of the way we could use catalog tasks um but yeah jx pipeline effective is is also a good solution actually uh, the way it kind of unwraps the pipeline is 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 much more helpful for the uh, users but the problem that i see there sometimes is like once it unwraps the pipeline it prop it it looks uh it looks little confusing like if you have to go and change some variables there, there's a lot of stuff to look at so if so it will be nice to just like kind of reference the catalog task from there yeah that i mean i that sounds pretty sweet actually when properly like when fully implemented that you could be able to reference any tecton task that's awesome yeah uh, actually we can we can do it right now if i'm not wrong uh, okay. we can we can do it right now we can uh, reference any tecton task uh, it, it's like an at uh, like you have to kind of give an at slash something and the location of the uh, yeah. task that is that we want to use yeah it's it's there right now but oh, i think it'll be it it'll still be like a long time till we kind of change the implementation completely i think what we have right now is also pretty pretty good um so uh, recently so the last thing i had worked on the plugin was uh, being able to uh, give different contexts i think or like not context like a uh, kubernetes context like which cluster would you like to run this tecton task or like pipeline in so uh, i was able to implement that on the global plugin configuration side but uh, i needed some help uh, with uh, referencing that in the job itself uh, so i was able to reference that but the the data that comes back from a uh, global plugin configuration isn't updated like if i go back to global plugin configuration and see that okay these things are here but i am not able to reference anything apart from default in the in the job so i'm uh, i i have to work on this so after merging it i opened a bug with this mm, gareth do you uh, do you have uh, could you help me out of this probably later on next week or something Because yeah, I'm out. On, I'm out on Monday, but I can probably do something yeah. outside of that. Awesome. I think that may even be the bit that I'm looking at now with the pipeline stuff, because I'm I'm trying to tell it to create tasks in the mock server, not the not the one with the current cube config that mm -hmm. I'm connected to. Um, so it could be very similar, whatever the solution is. Actually, um, can you also try? Considering you're already working on this uh, this part, can you also try like uh, creating a pipeline step from the um, like create raw has that part where you can give the uh, context. so probably if you can define it in a pipeline and then pass it on to uh, the context in create raw and in create raw itself you give like which cluster to use and which uh, um which namespace to use probably we can start there this will be this will be good that that would probably work also 
Yeah. What I'm thinking is like how so what I had done is I had uh, made the uh, made the array for uh, the cube configs uh, global, and I I tried to uh, reference that from the from the job, and it only takes so it seems like the state of the array is what it was initially and it is it is like localized only to global plugin configuration right now yeah. even if i thought it was global so something something related to scope that needs to be fixed so uh, in the in the middle of the week so i was just uh, thinking about like how how we could probably use this plugin you know to just uh, kind of run entire jenkins pipelines like in in the pipeline i basically give like a jenkins file and that entire jenkins file ex executes task executes tasks on tecton and i was thinking how this probably would work with dsl so once i was thinking if the dsl gets to a point where it is like we we are able to nicely give things like like define an entire pipeline we could probably write an example where uh, all of the Jen we have different jenkins tasks and all of them are running in the tecton pipeline but then i was thinking of the openshift sync plugin and uh I was thinking that in OpenShift Sync plugin they have something called build config and builds. So build. So what happens is exactly build configs are synced into uh, into the Jenkins uh, into Jenkins as jobs. So I was thinking if the if it would make sense to do something similar of syncing. Uh, tasks and task runs or oh, sorry pipelines and pipeline runs in jenkins so if i have like a pipeline and sync it in jenkins that means that that pipeline would be completely uh, converted to a that pipeline would be completely converted to like a jenkins file and that would mean like we need to have like a dsl ready at that point i was thinking if like it sounds like it's possible but the hurdle for this one is the dsl so at so at that point what 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 is possible for us to do is just like write a jenkins file completely written in uh, the pipeline step with tecton client plugin and then we can execute or like if we install jenkins on a kubernetes client which is also uh, if we install jenkins on a kubernetes server and uh, we turn on the tecton whatever sync plugin probably and it will sync all of the tasks and task runs into uh, into jenkins it seems like a big like a big step but uh, i was thinking if i was just like playing around with this idea in my head the other day uh, i just mm. i i just like blurted out <laughs> yeah but i was thinking about this the other day what do you guys think I yeah i mean i oh, oh, no sorry i just i, I mean yeah it just it sounds like a good sounds like a good idea um for me i think the 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 kind of most important thing is to get it get this to a point where like it can be used in the community and we start getting feedback um, and people sort of like real world use cases of how people actually want to interact with the Tecton client plugin. I think that would be really cool. Because um, at the moment, it's it, it's hard to see how people would want to use this. Well, I don't know how they would have them. We know why they would want to use it, but it's hard, hard to see how they actually would go about 
Um, like what features do they need to mm -hmm. handle that? I have a feeling that we'll get like a probably a good spike in usage one once we have the DSL ready, uh, like till till some extent because then uh, I'm I'm slowly understanding the fact that not a lot of people or directly use uh, the um, like the, there are a lot of users for it probably but like the ease of use with Jenkins file is much more. So if if there is a way to like turn this turn this thing around, it's like probably uh, have like good Jenkins file integration, which will come through DSL. And before that, yeah. And I think I think at that point it will be like quite usable. Do you, uh, Gareth? Would you like to give a uh, talk with me uh, for DevOps world on Gen this plugin thing? Yeah, that should be fine. When is that DevOps world? That's I, I don't know when it is, but the uh, deadline is on May twentieth, I think. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, um, yeah, we'll sync up on that. Yeah. Vibhav, my question was much higher level and conceptual, and you you a bit address it in the in your last comment. So for this idea, you, what you would be doing is something quite quite different. You'd in fact be taking a Jenkins pipeline and the Jenkins file for that using the syncing plugin, and be able to take that and then run that with Entecton. So it's the inversion. It's just like the flip. Yeah. So basically, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I would, it would be a way, to not really, uh, not run it. It's like, uh, it's like I, I would be able to see all my, it would be like a alternative dashboard to Tecton, in a way. That maybe, maybe it comes off incorrectly uh, because. Uh, what this means is um, when the tasks and task runs, the pipeline, pipeline runs are synced. So what will happen is they'll be synced by namespace. So there'll be a project, Jenkins project uh, called with the namespace name and the job in the namespace will be like a, a pipeline. Uh, like it'll be, I'm, now that I think about it, it should be like, One of the, okay, I'm confusing myself between like job and project. So it, it should probably be like, uh, if you go into a Jenkins job, I should go there and see that, okay, this is the uh, uh, Tecton pipeline which ran. And then if I go up, like, this is the pipeline run which happened. And if I press build again, it runs the Jenkins file, uh, which is running the Tecton uh, pipeline run. Uh, like we're just triggering the Tecton pipeline and creation of it. And then after that, uh, I should see all the results back in Jenkins. So it's kind of like uh, the sync plugin calls the client plugin uh, in a way. I'm just thinking like uh, whenever we do that sync and the pipeline runs get converted to um, Jenkins files, like how that will happen, it's because it seem it, that is that is the one hurdle that seems to be there. The, did anything I say made sense? I felt like I just like blurted out over there. No, that that was that was very good. I can't answer your question, but it was a very good explanation. I, did, Gareth, did you see this? I think there was once a PR um, for Tecton about running Jenkins or Jenkins jobs. As, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just wondering about how that relates to your idea and how much overlap or how if it can form it or. That idea is also similar uh, as as to what it does is it. Uh, 
it so tecton will have like its own new controller and that means it's that controller will be running in its own pod and then it will uh, so one, once we create a tecton uh, there, there will be like a tecton what like a tecton resource called jenkins job which is actually which is a tecton resource and <laughs> This Jenkins job uh, will trigger, or like it will, it will do something on Jenkins, and then wait for that uh, whatever process it is to like get over, and it'll come back to the controller. Usually, what happens is that uh, there, there's like uh, multiple ports for like each of the pipelines. So in this case, that won't happen. All the controller would be doing is like triggering and watching those tasks, and probably have like something of a uh, queue to manage, you know, uh, keeping keeping in touch with those uh, Jenkins jobs which are happening. So uh, it it that's that's the idea basically behind it. So it's basically uh, calling Jenkins from Tecton and managing it with like a Kubernetes control. Yeah, it's it just feels like everyone's trying to run everything. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit like a big game, and it's like Legos and having to put things yeah. together. It's quite fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. Yeah. Interop is just Legos. I feel. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then to Gareth's point, like. It's really fun to build things, but then it's like, okay, and, and how are going to actually take this new toy and play with it in the real world? <laughs> but you know what's interesting? Uh, Tecton initially, uh, I, I think as they started con considering like uh, abstraction and composability was such a big thing uh, with the with, uh, jobs and tasks and all itself. Uh, the, I mean the task pipelines, the pipelines, are, and the way it's created. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, uh, it it will slowly build uh, towards uh, this, uh, like more interoperability, and you know, having like something like a plugin mechanism because plugins were initially discussed quite a bit uh, in Tecton, but slowly the discussion moved to you know uh, doing. So the idea of plugins and how it would be implemented. Uh, there was no such uh, decision made on that as such. So that's why the catalog project started in the first place because tasks are usable. And if some, if we give tasks, which can be just uh, reused by, and just some parameters need to be given, uh, that would be cool, right? So th that's how it kind of like started the catalog thing. And, but, but, if you notice or uh, to actually extend the uh, engine to support something somewhere else, uh, there is a need for uh, doing something like this that has been mentioned in the Tecton experimental issue that you, that we are talking about right now, where like there needs to be a different controller entirely. And this controller needs to then uh, watch for some, a resource like Jenkins job and they are probably on the Jenkins uh, on the Tecton side. This this is the way that would be taken for you know extending Tecton because yeah. Jenkins was built with extensions in mind. So oh, okay. in the beginning, as you well, this, yeah, sorry, that's all right. That's good. Um, for when we're looking at cloud event data, which Tecton is supporting in now. Jenkins might be supporting, is that, um, would that also be a way to link up very dare, di disparate pipelines? Could that be another alternative way to go between Tecton pipelines, Jenkins pipelines, Tecton pipelines, like however you want to do that? Am I understanding that correctly? And then you could have a Kubernetes controller which would watch for the different events. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, well, what the Kubernetes can I was I was thinking about this before. Like we could just you know uh, have like an event queue on the Jenkins controller on the other side, and then 
okay. uh, that event you on Tecton like would uh, kind of do all this uh, like manage stuff on Jenkins through cloud events. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like probably we need, we'll have to pass like a lot of data and like how will the how will the eventing in that case work? Like I'm not sure. Uh, like okay, Jenkins job event created, and that job event cloud event goes to Jenkins, and uh, Jenkins is listening on this, and probably uh, like it will create, um, like it will create the uh, job. It will start a job based on the data in the uh, payload, which will be a Jenkins file. It could probably work, work something like that, and then uh, the the controller and the uh, whatever the cloud events plugin, then they will talk together, uh, managing the stuff. It could work like that as well, probably. I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. No. No. Are you attending the event sig for the Continuous Delivery Foundation? Um, oh yeah. Okay, I, I have I have not, I've just been busy and unfortunately haven't been as much as I would like to. I'll probably be attending more in the future, but I know that they do want more input from the Jenkins community. I may have pinged you about this. Yeah, they, they would like uh, more input on, I guess, the data definitions that we feel we need. I just think you would be a really great resource for that. Um, yeah, I in the morning I did see a message on the group. I I do need to reply to it. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. Uh, like, should I reply privately as well as publicly? I'll probably just do that. Yeah, that that's fine. That's great. That's fine. Yeah, but I'm very excited for the cloud events proposals and what's uh, what's gonna come. Um, I'm I'm very excited to see like uh, the infrastructure that will be spun up to test cloud events uh, because it's it's something. It's it's more of a so the implementation itself isn't very hard, but uh, what does what, what would be interesting is to like how how the students will use it. Yeah, agreed. It's a very exciting project. Um, I, I have let this, we have had a good conversation. I've let this meeting drag a little bit. Uh, just time wise, it's, it's taken up more time than I had expected. But thank you uh, for a great, like really great discussion today. That was really helpful for me and hopefully for others and really enjoyable. Do we have any uh, last, uh, any questions or any other issues to discuss? Anyone want to bring up anything that we have missed so far? Okay, great. Thank you all for being here today. Um, we'll see you at the next cloud events. I mean, uh, <laughs> so much on my mind. Slightly diff sig, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you too.